how long has this variety of biological sex e- existed in our in humanity? The variety? I'm yes. not sure what you mean by intersex. The one point seven percent that have intersex traits. Uh, like I said before, I, I'm not an endocrinologist, but I, I okay. believe intersex. Are you familiar with when the first the gender time. affirming clinic that did transition surgeries existed? I am not aware of when that existed. I okay, I'll tell you. Are, have you ever heard of Magnus Hirschfeld? I have not. Magnus Hirschfeld, the Hirschfeld Clinic in 1930, was the first trans clinic. They, they performed surgeries. It was a safe place for trans and LGBTQ folks to, to come and be there. Do you know what happened? After they built a medical library of information researching the complexities of sexuality and human uh, gender? I don't know what happened. It was the first Nazi book burning when they burned the entire library saying that it was sexually explicit material and then executed half the people involved. Because first they came for the trans kids. Do you want this to be your legacy as the floor leader of the house? All right, I I gotta ask you this question. That is what we're trying to This is something that when we debated this bill a couple years ago, a member of your side decided was a sort of gotcha question with all of us. What is a girl? I'm, I'm, what is a girl? Yeah, what is a girl? To me or? What is a girl? You're a doctor. What is a girl? I think a girl is a, is, a, is a human that's born with, you know, chromosomes. They have female organs. They exhibit female characteristics. Okay. Since then, what chromosomes changed. What chromosomes? It would be XX. Are you familiar with Swire syndrome? I am not. Okay. Um, it affects 1 in 80,000 people. That's roughly close to 100 people in Missouri. Where you're born with XY chromosome, but you exhibit female anatomy. Most of those kids are born, and their birth certificate will say they're female because they exhibit female anatomy. They identify as female. But at puberty, their body starts changing and looks more and more like a male, unless they take puberty blockers, which would be banned by the last bill. So a girl that's born with an XY chromosome but starts to look like a boy because we forced her to, where's she going to play sports? The answer to that would be, I don't know. Yeah. The issue is... You know what your bill says? The, the bill says they, she would have to play on the bill, girls' team, right? It, no bill is a perfect bill. <laughs> and so... We're passing laws here, gentlemen, and we're not yeah. talking about a large group of people, right? No, we're not. How many but, people are intersex? Uh, I, I can't tell you the I can. statistics. 1.7% exhibit uh, intersex traits. That's actually about the same as having red hair. It's a decent number of kids that fall in a gray area, right? Like Swire syndrome, where maybe they don't fit easily in what their birth certificate says. But this bill takes a completely blanket approach and says, that girl whose body is now becoming a male body, she's going to have to play on the girls' team, and she's going to have to become physically a boy. Aren't you creating exactly the problem with this blanket policy that you and the bill sponsor talked about wanting to prevent with this bill? I think you could make an argument that no bill is perfect. What we're trying to do is for the vast majority of athletes out there that they have a level well, isn't that, though, gentlemen, exactly what Misha and the NCAA and groups that are trying really hard to handle the nuance, the medical and biological nuance of these questions, they're trying to address that and incorporate that to make sure that the vast majority, actually all kids, are able Would to play in a Olympics fair in environment. That? I think they're trying to do it, too. Right. And the Olympics has essentially banned females from swimming. Because when you, to compete, you have to have started puberty blockers bef- before puberty and to have a testosterone level less than 0.05 Banned nanometers. Banned females from swimming? What are you saying? They have said that the, the World uh, Swimming Organization has said that to do that, you have to have started puberty blockers before puberty. Yes and to have a certain amount of testosterone in, yes. in your serum. Would this bill allow that to happen? 
there is nobody out there that would meet those requirements okay. right now. Right now, there might be and eventually. This, would this Olympics bill allow that to happen? Banned no, they haven't though. That's the swimming. point. They and didn't they say said, the Olympics didn't say we're limiting you to what your birth certificate says. The Olympics said, "Hey, let's look at for each sport what are the things that make this most appropriate and fair so that everyone can compete." And they Isn't said, that and uh, one of the things they've said is that you have to have started puberty blockers yes. before puberty. And no, I heard you, and gentlemen. And have a certain testosterone level. This bill doesn't allow there that. There are hardly any women that could meet that. Yes, but there are some, aren't there? Who, who could meet that? Uh, we will see. So they have essentially banned it. Now, are the Olympics... Are gentlemen, if we were talking about a bill that was trying to respect that same kind of nuance that said, if someone falls in this category, which, yes, medically can exist and likely will... Right? That likely will happen, that there will be someone that meets those standards. This bill just ignores all of that nuance. All of that nuance that the experts, the medical community, and the people that want fair sports are actually working on, right? Wouldn't we be better off taking a nuanced approach that respects medical science and the experts in sports? If you look at the Olympics, there are going to be no transgender swimmers okay. at the next Olympic Games. I, I got to move on because I think that, you're not answering that we're my question. Trying to provide